a question for you. If you had a time machine, where and when would you like to go? I've spent probably too much time thinking about this question, but one of my top suggestions to any time travelling tourist would be an event called the Field of the Cloth of Gold. It was a bonkers lavish tournament that took place in France in 1520. Uh, so King Henry VIII of England and King Francis I of France met up and basically just had this giant politically important knees up. It was this party that went on for a couple of weeks, I think. Um, so that's why I was really excited to get this Christmas present. It's a kit from a company called Timber Kits to make a moving mechanical wooden model which depicts the field of the cloth of gold. Now, I'm not sponsored by Timber Kits or anything, I just really like their products. I've had a couple of these before, um, which I might show you at some point. First, I think I'm going to get to work on these hills in the background. Uh, so I'm going to concentrate on making these hills in the distance look far off by making them bluer than the hills in the foreground, which is a real phenomenon. Fun, fun science fact! Uh, because of all the atmosphere that's in between you and those distant things scattering blue light. It's, it's the same mechanism that makes the sky look blue. So while I uh, do that, aren't, aren't you just dying to hear more fun facts about this Tudor tournament? Okay, it's 1513 and there are two young kings on the scene in the world of European monarchies. There was Henry VIII, the English king, and there was Francis I, the French king. Now, Henry VIII ends up invading France early on in his reign. Um, because at this point, the English uh, are actually laying claim to the throne of France, and, and Henry thinks that he has a right to that French throne, and at first he thinks he's going to take it by force. By 1514, a year later, um, he ends up making a treaty with the French. So in order to try and turn around this strained relationship between these two nations and these two monarchs who've recently been at war, uh, this chap called Cardinal Thomas Wolsey decides to create this giant tournament. Both Henry and Francis are going to attend it and they're going to make a show of getting on with each other while also having a bit of an opportunity to show off their wealth and their splendour and their prowess as well in some physical activities. It takes place in Calais, which is in France today, but that was actually English territory at the time. I guess maybe it was seen as a bit of a kind of neutral space. And just the planning that went into this thing blows my mind. There was just all these tents, there was... In particular, there was this thing that is described as like a portable palace that Henry VIII put together. Um, it took 6,000 people to put it all up and it was made of timber and, and covered in canvas, but it was painted to look like stone and apparently it really did look like a palace from a distance. And just the list of stuff that happened in this, there was banquets, archery displays and competitions, wrestling displays and competitions, there was theatre and dance and, and there's a really famous painting that was painted of the field of the cloth of gold. Uh, it was painted in 1545 and you can actually see it today at, at Hampton Court and that painting is what this kit from Timber Kits is based on. So I've got to admit I'm not copying the colour scheme of the painting exactly. I'm trying to be a little bit creative about it. Painting this tiny weeny Henry VIII is so hard. It's just so small. I really admire people who paint miniatures and, and things like that that are just, they're just so dainty. I'm kind of a bit sad that I'm not making him fully beardy. This is quite a young Henry VIII. Like this is before, um, you know, it's before any of the... I think he's on wife number one. That's how early... <laughs> that's, that's how early we are in Henry chronology. He's on wife number one.
I suppose I should explain what I'm doing with the painting here. So I'm just putting down a base coat of this goldish colour that I've mixed together. I thought it's the field of cloth of gold, so he needs to be wearing gold. And he is in the painting of the event as well. Henry's dressed in gold, which makes him stand out from all the other figures in the painting. So I've done that, then I'm just adding in a little bit of shading where I think there's likely to be shadow, where there's shadow from him, where there's maybe folds of cloth. It's really hard because it is so small. And then I put in some strong highlights here because I thought it might make it look like there's shiny gold thread in his clothes. Oh, now one thing I've got to tell you about is this dragon. So in the kit, this dragon I think is going to uh, fly at the top. I think it might spin. I'm not completely sure what it's going to do, but I need to paint this tiny dragon. Why, I hear you ask, is there a tiny dragon in your kit depicting a real historical event? Well, there are written accounts describing this dragon. Um, just to give you a little flavour of one, um, it says that it has these blazing eyes, a quivering tongue that licks its mouth, which opens wide. The dragon hisses through its gaping jowls. Its monstrous head bristles with bloody crests. The rest of its body skims the boundless air behind. It makes a sound as it advances over the earth, rustling wings, while with its great body it cleaves a path through the air. Um, so yeah, it says that this dragon arrives and um, it, it terrifies everybody. It says that their, their face is pale at the sight and the crowd, terrified, scatters, seized by panic. Um, and then it kind of suggests that it, it just kind of settles there, chilled out, uh, like, a, like a bird gliding in the peaceful air. There are multiple theories about this dragon. One, maybe it's just a metaphorical dragon. Like when it came to writing up this historical event, uh, people put in this story about this dragon to kind of signify that this was a really special moment when like anything could happen and this, this dragon was in there. Two, could be a real dragon. Okay, I haven't actually come across any historians suggesting that it was a real dragon, but I, I'm going to put that in there right now. Perhaps it was a real dragon. Um... Other ideas I like, it could have been a kite. My favourite one is, um, you know that scene at the beginning of The Lord of the Rings where it's uh, Bilbo's birthday party. Gandalf terrifies all of the hobbits by letting off a firework that looks like a dragon. I don't want to put the scene in here because YouTube will hate me, but you know that scene. Some people say it, it could be that. It could have been a firework. I quite like that. I quite like that idea that it was a firework. Although I don't know why you would write about a firework and say it was a dragon. So yeah, who knows? Who knows what that dragon is? But here, here's my little dragon, my little guy, who's gonna uh, look over my tournament and survey it peacefully with deep metaphorical meaning. So I'm gonna keep on working at painting this. Hopefully in my next video, I'll get to show you a beautifully painted, finished um, set of wooden pieces and we can try and put them together and see how they're gonna move. Thank you a bunch for watching. This is my first attempt at doing something like this, doing a video like this. I guess if I'm a YouTuber now, this is the point where I say, subscribe and hit that bell and stuff if you want to, I guess. And if you have no idea who I am, my name's Helen Greetham. You can find out more about me at helengreetham.com. Uh, I make comics. I particularly like making comics for museums and research groups, but I also just make fun comics for fun. And you can read plenty of them on that website for absolutely no money. They are free. Okay, till next time. Bye.